What's going on, buddy? And we're back. This is episode 36. Yeah. 30. Five. Five. Yeah. 35. 35. 35. Might be the most consistent thing in my life, Rich. <laughs> Isn't that a <laughs> fucking disaster? Isn't that pathetic? Um, how's it going? It's going. It's going. I got a couple of things. Okay. But let's go. It. Let's go with yours first. Yeah, it was fun. So I, I was watching. Uh, I watched. Uh, we spent the night in this weekend. We watched. Uh, it's called Dirty Pop on Netflix. Have you seen it? No. It's about in so, sync. Yeah. So it's it <laughs> it well it's about Lou Pearlman. It's a it's a three part docu series about Lou, it, Lou Pearlman. So when you hear Dirty Pop though. What do you think of? Dirty pop, da da pop, da da pop. That song, it's an NSYNC song, right? Yeah, yeah, no shit. But doesn't that make you think of when you were 14 years old at the limelight and you're in the subway and the guy was like, oh, you're in sync? I don't remember that. Dirty pop. Dirty pop. <laughs> I don't remember that. Because we dressed like we thought 21 year olds dressed and it was like khaki pants. <laughs> the worst spiky hair leather jacket. Gross. Gross. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, go. So it was a it was a dark three part donkey series about Lou Pearlman, yeah, and and sync. Well, the Backstreet Boys first, then and sync, and how he's a pedophile fucking crook. Wasn't a pedophile, never even alleged pedophile. I'm gonna put that out first of all. You watch the docu, you should watch. It's pretty fascinating, right? Mm. It's kind of a kind of a great guy, Lou Pearlman. But I had no idea that he actually operated to this date the country's longest running Ponzi scam in the history of America. What is he scamming? Everybody. So he had, he started out with, he always liked flying. He wanted to get into the balloon business. So he started a company where, uh, for like hot air balloons? Yes. No, uh, blimps, like Goodyear blimps, like McDonald's. And he, he started a company that he would do blimps and like get contracts with, um, McDonald's or other big companies to advertise on his blimps, right? So he started this company. Like mysteriously, these blimps just like always kept crashing though. And then like these, insurance you know of course the insurance policies get filed and they're worth like two and a half million dollars and then he got out of that business and then he saw he rented airplanes he was in the airplane renting business and he saw like um he saw new kids on the block and he's like what the hell are these kids doing and the, he's like oh man this is where the money is huh so he started developing a boy band in orlando and he developed the backstreet boys okay. right but this whole time, he had this company called, uh, what was the name of the company? Transatlantic Airline or what? A Transatlantic something. Mm -hmm. And he was doing an investment fund, like advertised in the paper, 9.75% 9, 9 returns, which at the time was like really good. Yeah, it's still, still, it's still, still is for fun. Yeah. Still pretty fun, good for yeah. fun. Yeah. Insured, and it was whatever was it, federally insured was insured by Lloyd's of London. Like it all seemed very, very legit. But it wasn't. It was just a giant Ponzi scam. And he was such a popular, Damn. like, magnetizing guy that, like, everybody wanted to be around him. He was, like, a great guy, like, a great friend, a good person, business associate. And everybody was just giving him money. Family, friends, everything. And he would bring around, like, the Backstreet Boys and all these. Wasn't was he stealing their money, too, though? Well, so he did the Backstreet Boys. And then he started NSYNC because he's like, you know, some, there's going to be a competitor. He was a guy who was a fucking genius. Legitimately, like, give credit where credit's due. He was like a marketing and branding he just genius. just loved pop music. <laughs> he loved money. And maybe he liked being around young kids. Yeah. But his whole idea was like, if someone's going to try to come up with a competition, I'm going to come up with the competition. Yeah. So he started NSYNC. And then they got like, you know, all this crazy, did all this work and then got money. And their first check was like $10,000. And one of the guys was like, how much money would you make a year with your old Outback job? And he's like, yeah, I just did way more work than waiting an Outback. Like, this is fucked up. So NSYNC sued them. And then the Backstreet Boys sued them and all this shit. But dude, his settlement for like what they undis like disclosed was like over $65 million to get buy out of their contract. For NSYNC, like that guy was just making money off of NSYNC. They had to pay him sixty-five million to, to get out of their contract. To get out of his contract. Holy shit! And he was such a shrewd, like business yeah. guy. I'm sure there was like resist. He was get any time NSYNC played. He Lou Pearlman was getting paid. Like pretty the guy much. that fucking was managing Elvis. Pretty much. Pretty much. Fuck but everything from that fuck, guy. But except that guy wasn't running an actual Ponzi scam. Lou no, Pearlman. He was just milking Elvis yeah, dry. Over half a billion dollars Lou Pearlman stole. And then Damn. he, and that was, was just, he in jail? well, he died. He was, he went to jail and he died in jail. Fuck. Um, but yeah, he, it was, that was half a billion just from private investors. And then it's, 
they think over another two to three hundred million from just defaulting bank loans, going to a bank, getting a hundred thousand loan, mm-hmm. go to another one, get two hundred, pay that one back, and then just keep like bloop bloop bloop, like just doing that over and over but again. Eventually, someone doesn't get paid. <laughs> yeah, eventually, a bank doesn't get paid, and when you get big enough, then you can get like a hundred million dollar line of credit from something. But like, yeah, dude, this guy Damn. was just. And he would have gotten away with it had he not paid his attorney. He is a he used an attorney for a lawsuit that he won, that NSYNC won, and he was the lawyer was supposed to get paid a percentage of the settlement. So his percentage of that settlement was sixteen and a half million dollars. The lawyer, Lou Perlman, gave him one payment, never fucking paid him again. That's how he got caught. And the lawyer, some God like damn. some like Florida, big, big, yeah. some like fucking Florida swinging dick text. I think it's like At a least Texas ten attorney. billboards. With He's his like, face on yeah, it. this guy like no fucking joke. He's yeah. like fuck that. I'm getting my money, and he like. When you have a fucking big dick attorney coming at you, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the one you don't want to piss off. The one you don't like should have just paid him the sixteen and a half million dollars, bro. Yeah. Like you would have been fine. You would have yeah. kept the. You might have even been able to start paying Ponzi scam back. Yeah, that's what got him. Damn. That's greed. Just being like, eh, nothing's gonna happen. I mean, that's what always gets him. But he was crazy powerful though. So there's this one story where they're talking about after Michael Jackson had his trial for the the molestation charges. Yeah. He, Lou Perlman, reached out to the Jacksons and said, this is what you need to do. You guys need to do a family Jackson 5 reunion tour with Michael, everybody. Get them all back. It's going to shift the focus off the trial, back to the wholesome family thing. It'll be great, right? So Lou Perlman convinces the Jacksons to do this whole thing. They have their concert. They only did one show. It was on 910 in Madison Square Garden. No one ever talked about the show because the next day was 911. So did that, he had his, this band they were developing, I can't remember the name, at the time they were in New York City for a promo. He's like, we need to get you guys back to Orlando. And this is like the band member telling the story. He's like, Lou, this is, no one's flying. Like this, no one's going anywhere. He goes, uh, let me make a call. The next day, this band was on an airplane, escorted back with F-16s to Orlando from New York. The next day after 9-11. I gotta watch this. Wild. He goes, Lou, how did that happen? He goes, I just called you, uh, George W. That's all he ever said. He just said he called George W., as in the sitting president during 9-11, and was allowed to fly back to Orlando with a C-rate pop band with F-16 fighter jets. Goddamn. He was wildly powerful, like insanely powerful. He was super piped in. What's with it called? Dirty, Dirty pop. pop. It's awesome. It's like three oh. 45-minute ep- It's fucking, you'll binge it. It's awesome. It's Damn. really good. Really, really good. I got to watch that. But like, looking back, like that guy Lou Perlman, man, he did. He really like he he was kind of an important guy for pop culture. Yeah, I guess. Like you think, like when we were kids, you're like that music Heart was throb boy bands. That music was so gay when we were kids. But then you look yeah. back, you're like, oh yeah, man, it makes me think MTV. Like that was a whole culture, that a whole cultural movement that he he started. He's arguably partly responsible for discovering Britney Spears. He first developed Britney in a girl, like a four or five girl group. And he had this big ass production studio in Orlando that all yeah. they would do is just they would just develop pop stars. Damn. And then Britney broke off and did her own thing. But he he would claim that he discovered Britney Spears. But it's kind of an interesting so the story. Disney Channel discovered her. Wasn't she in like the yeah? But Mickey then they Mouse Club they sit shit? in that limbo like most yeah, of yeah. NSYNC. They were on the Disney Channel too. Like oh Disney, we use these kids up yeah. for two three years and then well, uh, go and, and they all worked at fucking Disney World resorts. Like they just yeah, yeah. they're just kids in or- Orlando, Florida. You know. Yeah, it's a cool story though. But he was a criminal. Yeah, longest running Ponzi scam in the history of America. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And then he just went to jail and like. Had a fucking died dead. In jail. yeah, like a like some heart thing, like a surgery, and he died. Like that was it. No one ever got paid back. No one knows if he had any other money. Damn, lying around. Probably dead. They interviewed this one guy. He went to he, that he was friends with from Orlando who went to jail for like racketeering, and they were in jail at the same time. And he goes, Lou told me he had like three hundred million offshores, and like the Caymans or one of those something. <laughs> I'm like, so who knows? Maybe he did. Maybe. Have kids. No, he was like weird. Like they briefly touched on and he was like probably a homosexual. They they said he like like Lou was just asexual. Like it was never like, and they had <laughs> he just like fucked money. He just fucked piles of money. <laughs> like right, he was like this big fat redheaded Jewish guy from New York. Probably yeah. had a micro penis and damn. And but they interviewed a couple of people and they're like no, like I, they're like yeah. Looking back, like 
maybe he's like a little handsy. He's like hanging out with like young kids all the time. But like, but like Lou never did anything. Like Lou never did anything. Never heard anything. Like, listen, after, yeah. after I die, the one thing I don't want to be described as yeah. is handsy, is especially handsy with seventeen-year-old boys. <laughs> Yeah, but no, yeah, no, but nothing. No, thanks. Everybody in that show was like very adamant. They're like, yeah, no. Like, like he was a super nice guy. He was just a yeah. little handsy. He just like, like giving us piggyback ride. <laughs> it's, it's odd. Tickle it's odd. time was yeah. his favorite. It's like, Tickle time was his favorite. You're like, I'm 16 years old. Get away from me, guy. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but it was never weird. Yeah. It was that was never part of the story of that. Like, Lou, oh, Lou was I a, wonder if a his fucking fam- boy. His family like signed off on the doc. You know and what I mean? He does it. It's actually really fucking sad. Because he died in prison, and it's like you know. But maybe he doesn't have children. Maybe he's got like cousins, siblings, his, whatever. <laughs> it's funny. So he died in prison, mm. and eventually they got in touch with one of the pop stars who was very close with him because he was doing like this develop. They were doing some like TV thing like outside of whatever, and they're like, "We've been trying to get in touch with somebody. His body's been has been here for three weeks. Like we don't have anybody to claim it." Art Garfunkel is actually his cousin. It's his. His mom's sister, son, is Art Garfunkel, like Damn. Simon and Garfunkel. Wow. They reached out to him, never wanted nothing. So, like, it was this pop star and, like, his old secretary were, like, the ones that, like, worked it out to actually get get the body back, bury it in New York at the plot next to his family because he's Jewish in the Jewish cemetery in New York. I think he was from Staten Island. And uh, still today, there's, the guy doesn't even have a headstone. Buried in a fucking pine box, no headstone. Could only five people went to his funeral, and I think that, that's in the doc too. That, it's, that's all part. It's all part of the documentary. God damn, it's all part of the documentary. And it's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bad. Makes me a bad person. But I watch this. And it's like okay. So this guy got people for money. But my whole opinion with people who get caught in with Ponzi scams. It's like you all think you're smarter than every fucking body else when you're in the scam, right? Yeah, get rich. Bernie scam, made off right? like, oh, Bernie, he's the best. Uh, thir- I mean, aside from the people whose pensions funds got got fucked, but yeah. like the individual investor, they all think they're so fucking smart, right? Like, oh, you can't go anywhere else for almost ten percent returns or thirteen, whatever he's getting or this guy's getting, and you think you're so fucking smart, and everybody else is stupid. Oh, bonds are well, low, six percent. My guy gets me twelve. Like okay, that, that fucking, and then what? And then the, and then, then the rug pulls out, and it's unfortunate. That docu series about Bernie Madoff is crazy. Crazy. How people didn't see it sooner. Crazy. The moment things shifted to the internet, yeah, that, that's what fucked him. Yeah, because yeah, he's yeah. still like printing, like physically yeah. printing trade, yeah, trade well, receipts, and they're like, yeah. wait a second, these trades never happen because the digital digitalized yeah. now yeah, 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 and you're yeah. like holy shit yeah like he's got that's this it. fucking old ass xerox printer that's fucking printing you could fucking co- confirmation reports you couldn't do it today because he even perlman he was yeah. really good at he was a great artist oh, and yeah. he would fucking forge, forge signatures documents fuck, fuck. german bank bo- d- banks from germany Deutsche bank forge documents crazy shit so like you can't really do it today how effective i mean i guess there's versions of the ponzi scam that probably still work today oh, but ton, like that way yeah, now it's like, an influencer but like these fucking people come to my seminar i teach you how to be successful they were all fucking, sucking on lou's dick yeah lou was king of the world everybody wanted to be near him no one could be like oh you know what yeah you fucking lou was a good guy though lou was mm. a good guy remember his 50th birthday how fucking crazy that was remember that Remember that? He had Justin Timberlake sing happy birthday to him. Remember how fucking fun that Lou was a great guy. Let me check. Justin Justin Timberlake (laughs) sitting on his lap singing him happy birthday. Yeah. Actually, he did it. I didn't think that was that weird. There was only one, at his 50th birthday, only one of the members of NSYNC came back and and sang to him because he's like, you know, after everything with Lou, like, yeah, like we had a sue and everything, but like if it weren't for Lou, like we would never have been a thing. So, like, who was the guy? I can't. the, the, The. not the gay one, not Joey Fatone, not Justin Timberlake, and not the other guy. The ugly, the little ugly, like a little rat face one. Yeah. He's like a little rat face one. He's saying like the the, Ill, the most irrelevant one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's like, yeah, like, you know, he's like, I always appreciated Lou. Like, things got dirty, but like, if it weren't for Lou, like, NSYNC, I, I have a lot to thank. Like, without Lou Perlman, I wouldn't have anything I have today. Even forget about the lawsuit. I wouldn't have what I have today if it weren't for Lou. So I always appreciated him for that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, Justin Timberlake, you hear Lou dies? Why don't you quietly? Hey. Maybe he did, though. 
No, the guy's got no fuck. Guy's got guy had no funeral. He has no headstone. He's sitting there in a cemetery in New York with no headstone. You think Justin Timberlake couldn't call his guy? Be like, listen, quietly, go get Lou a fucking headstone. I got a feeling he's probably a shitbag of a person. Shitbag of a person. Like none person. of those. None of those people couldn't have been like you know three racks. Go get Lou a headstone. Three racks. Don't. Make, I don't want to come in for he's, me. He Just get him a headstone. He hangs out. You couldn't him. do that. You couldn't appreciate that. He the people hangs out with very disingenuous people. His circle, well, who I've hung people. out with, like I've hung out with some of them in yeah. the Hamptons and stuff, they're like very fake people. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But like nobody has any decency to be like, yeah, okay, he ran a Ponzi scam, but like y'all have fucking money. You couldn't. Look at all these celebrities getting paid for their political Fucked fucking up. opinion, Fucked pushing up. fucking bullshit these narratives people are that scum. are fucking fake. Listen, if I knew Lou, I would have gotten him a fucking headstone. It's not too late. <laughs> Should we raise? Should we do a? Should we do a GoFundMe to raise money to buy Lou Pearlman a headstone? <laughs> the biggest assholes ever. I mean, you know what? Like, you got as as someone who appreciates all kinds of music and all music. Like, it was a very important part of music culture. It was a, a hugely important part of our childhood growing up. It was one of the things that like shaped our generation. Like, he is an musically music history. He is an important guy. You gotta you gotta respect that. I don't give a fuck. But his Ponzi scam, give a shit. I kind of care. Sh- shame on you. Shame on you. You thought you were smarter than everybody else getting these great returns. Here's the thing. Suckered that you let. If you, some, let's say you were part of a Ponzi, Ponzi scheme, right? Like would the you operator feel, or the. No, no, the, no. The, like, a, <laughs> like if someone that got scammed. Yeah. How bad would you feel? Okay. If you are susceptible to being scammed, right? Mm-hmm. Would it feel worse that you got scammed by like Bernie Madoff, Lou Pearlman, right? Or would it feel worse that you got scammed by West Watson? <laughs> <laughs> it feel way worse getting scammed by West Watson because you know way what worse. it is. You know what it is. Way you know worse. it's bullshit. Well, at least Lou, at least Bernie Madoff did have a very legitimate part of his Dude, business. I saw, Lou Perlman was a very you, legitimate. I said it to you. This guy was talking shit about West Watson. He goes, he goes, yeah. He's like, you know, I I joined his fucking thing, and he was like, oh, he's like, if you want to be a VIP. Blah blah blah. He's like, we're having the conference in Miami. VIPs for thirty thousand. I hang out with you for a day. Yeah. We work out. That's okay. what. That's what. That's what my ex wife's boyfriend does. Thirty thousand. That, he, he. It's called the. Ma- like, it's called. Fuck off. It's called the Miami Mastermind meeting. They just had one two. The week I got back from Spain, my ex wife and her uh. boyfriend went down to that because he does that. Which is because yeah. he actually makes a, a, a very a lot of money. The guy smashed him. He was like, "You rent your penthouse." He's like, "You lease your car." He's like, "I don't even know if your watch is real." He's like, "And I'm going to give you thirty thousand dollars." He's like, "You call." And the guy, because Wes Watson, when he was like, "Yeah, I don't know about thirty thousand. He's like, "You're a lo-. Wes Watson was like, "You're a loser. You're a fucking nobody." He's like, "Blah blah blah." He's like, "My net worth is fucking one hundred eighty million dollars." I'm like, "Who's this guy talking to me?" He's like, "So now I'm going to spend my time allocating time to make him feel as." I'm big as he is listen the guy is and I, you know again i like to play devil's <laughs> advocate with the scammers <laughs> because i think people like that are actually fascinating it was hilarious that diddy, i think they're fascinating after diddy's house got raided the first time he was seen in public he was with west watson it's awesome in miami. king of miami he's probably a sex trafficker king of miami get the king fuck of out miami. of here he's a fucking loser but like he, he says a- that but then that the other guy the fucking i forget what his name is big fucking real estate guy was like you're the king of miami He's like, how about the fucking, how about the Ross family that built the fucking Miami skyline? Yeah. Well, let's be honest. The, mo- the mostly the people who are actually the kings of the areas you're in, you don't even fucking they're know. Kings them. of the clubs. Yeah, and they're not dressed well. <laughs> they're low key. Or that's, they're, they're, you they're, see that, yeah. that five hundred foot yacht in the fucking yeah, harbor? They're that's not theirs. They're, and they're not, they're not right rent, next to they're the, not right renting next to the, the yacht. cruise ship. Yeah, they're not renting the yacht. They're renting you yeah. the yacht. Yeah, you know. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, you have to wonder. My ex boyfriend does that. Like he makes money through his job. He makes it, he does very well for himself. Yeah. But he's scamming pays people. <sighs> that job is scamming people. I it's, mean, it's helping businesses go out of business. That's listen, what that job is. Listen, the MCA. Tell me I'm wrong. The, uh, not unless you pay them back. I've taken an MCA and paid it back and it was fucking helpful. I took one for 15,000 one time for my business to go yep. down to a big coin show. Yeah. I paid it back. I did a quick payback. It was it was great. It put it, and it put money in my pocket. I get immediately. that part, but I there's mean, a lot eventually. Of people, it's like there, there's the a second lot second position, third well, position. Fucking. It's it's not. It's just that it's they, like addiction. They get predatory. Yeah, they get predatory, yeah. and 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 it's the wording that's ugly. They don't because mm-hmm. the if it was the term was interest rate, they would be in jail five years ago. Right, but for it's usury. A, it's yeah. a factor rate, so it's yeah. not interest. It's a yeah. purchase of future receivables. Blah blah blah. Listen. It, 
It just so happens to be one of the industries that people it's that dirty, lost that lost it, their Series Seven got into. Is it dirty business or not? Um, all financial shit's dirty business, okay. dude. It's all dirty. I don't want you playing devil's advocate. I am. Tell the truth. It's, I'm not, not, I'm, it's dirty I'm, business. I'm, I'm not being a hater. It's, 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 it's a very... Dirty, it's dirty business. It's dirty business, but it's a very real industry. Yeah. It's a very real industry. Uh, and, and as far they as... They fudge things, numbers. They fudge, well, they fudge account statements. They fudge a lot of shit to so, get people more money. So it's a dirty business, and, and some of those shops are significantly dirtier than the others. Correct. Significantly. Sig not touching the, not they, touching the yeah, board. They're significantly dirtier than the others. Yeah. So, like, it, it depends on the shop. But, yeah, it's, you know, it's, listen, it's a grimy fucking industry. Yeah. The point is, he makes all this money, and you can go spend, to go pay for a weekend to go hang out with, like, a bunch of dudes. Like, what is, I do wonder, because from the outside looking in, you can make fun of it, but I wonder, is there, there's got to be a benefit to doing it. Like if you're going to, not, so not just like going and, and sucking him off by himself. You're with like well five, six, eight other people so, who also hustled up enough money to justify coming and do this for a weekend. So thing. it's more than eight people. So it's probably well, like whatever they is. do a conference. It's probably a thousand people, three hundred people, whatever. No, I've seen but on his Instagram. They do. It's like a very because how many? That's you, the, that's, you, yeah. that's the VIP. That's experience. the VIP. But thing. during yeah, that yeah. during that weekend or whatever, he probably hosts a conference. Probably where like his VIP sits yeah. off to the side and blah blah blah. Some like ten X so bullshit or something. My thing yeah. is your ex's boyfriend. Mm -hmm. The benefit that he's getting. Is he's probably getting his business in front of those three hundred business owners, yeah, and that's, saying, "Oh, if you ever need any, uh, yeah, that's so that's blah, 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 so that's what I'm saying. So it is, but not it is probably worth it. Because I I have a customer of mine who's like legit person, and he went to a Grant Cardone ten X conference, and I, I was Scam. like, dude, what do you? I said, dude, what are you doing? Like Grant Cardone guy. He's like, honestly, but I know what you mean. But he goes, when you're there, he goes, you actually like. He goes, the other people that you're there with who are spending the money, they're far more interesting than yeah, like yeah. actually listening to Grant Cardone stroke himself off on a stage for an yeah, hour. Yeah. So like I get I get the yeah, I get I get the the benefit in paying the money to like put yourself in a room with other like minded people. Maybe they have businesses. I could see it like working. I could see it making sense, like as far as that goes. But if you're just like I, I I don't know. I, I don't understand how people make money like that through like influencing and selling package. I don't get how that works. So like maybe it works for those people, those like social media type people. It's just like whole, it's like network networking's networking. Yeah, right. It, it doesn't matter what the, the industry is. So maybe it, maybe it is worth it. I think it's probably like anything, right? You go I mean, to a conference, I, there's full of a thousand people who are using their last dollar to be there because they think they're going to walk out and, and be a million rich. and yeah. get rich. They're going to get the secret. Yeah. Like if it weren't for the masses thinking it's going to work, that whole model would never work. And I think a small for a very small percentage of all those people who buy into that shit, it works for. I think that's it, ha it has to. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't just keep going on. It can't just be like Wes Watson. It's got to be like, other people doing the I mean, same thing. There's a lot of them. It's not just one guy. There's so a ton. Then, so there's then. the old car salesman guy so that's a fucking multimillionaire now. So does then, the same thing. Sales coach. Yeah, so and co brings work. the fat guy up on stage and makes fun of him for being fat. So then it works. Like, look at you. You're fat. You're fat. Take your shirt off. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That guy. There's a ton of those guys. The problem is so, so many works. eyes on social media, right? Yeah. So what's it called? Uh, dead scrolling. Mm. Right, people yeah, are just yeah. mindlessly yeah, on yeah. fucking yeah, yeah. dude. TikTok has this fucking ring that mm. like you don't have to touch your phone. You just go like this, and it scrolls for you. Really? Imagine being that fucking lazy piece of shit. You're just like wearing a ring, and like phone is propped up, and you're like, no. <sighs> but that's all where, fucking day long. But that's where we're going as a society, horrible. dude. It's fucking horrible. You ever seen the movie Ready Player One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I like the, that movie. Also, awesome movie, really great movie. I'd like to be. That. That'd be fucking cool, right? Yeah, yeah. But like escape reality because your life fucking sucks. Yeah, you but live that's, in a fucking an RV park that's horizontal. But that's not really far off of like where we're going. Yeah. As a society. Which is sad. <sighs> I don't know. Not like that today, though. It's fine. Not yet. No, I gotta like get rid of my phone. Right. I've been doing a lot of I've been doing a lot of fucking retard death scrolling, just like I'm like, dude, stop. Yeah. I gotta get one of those bags. You know those the bags? Faraday bag? Yeah. yeah. You put it in and no just... one can text you. You can't fucking no one knows where you are. Yeah. Give people like uh, anybody yeah. important, like give them the my little flip phone number. If you really need to call me, you can call me on this. I was I think I was on Joe Rogan or Sean Ryan. His nightstand 
drawer mm-hmm. is a Faraday box. Really? So he opens the drawer, puts his fucking oh, devices and closes cool. the drawer in his that's nightstand, cool. and that's fucking Faraday. I do put my phone on airplane mode and turn the Wi-Fi off at night when Makes I go sense. to sleep. Yeah, because yeah, that's why you suck it up loading. <laughs> I think it's my internet that sucks. In spirit, your internet does suck bro, at your house. The, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, do you know what happened? Because you you told me oh, you didn't pay your bill. You didn't pay your bill. <laughs> Fuck you! I paid my bill. I dealt with that shit again with the phone calls. They, they had it all come when I told them, you got to replace the fucking box. Yeah, they just had to replace the box. Why? Because it, it's fucking- Because they new. shut your service off and then no, they don't- they didn't, they didn't it? shut it off. The, 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 it was never shut off to begin with. The fucking, the box stopped working. Like the router inside the modem stopped working. They had to replace the fucking scum, modem. Scum of the earth. I've had it for like almost four years. Those things go, nothing yeah. don't make anything last. The guy had to come. It was a whole thing. I was like, oh my God. Got the, the lemonade stand going on at the house. Yeah, how was that? Some Karen complained? No, Karen's complained. Dude, My those kids, they raked in $150 in lemonade sales in like two hours. 150 bucks. Good for them. Yeah. You tax it? I told her, I was like, we should teach them about... I was like, well, the, I was like, you know, I'm like, you went out and bought cups. Here's $5 for you. Here's yeah. $5 for you. The rest goes to dad. 25 for the cost of the fucking lemonade. This, that. You get mix? Yeah, we got the mix. Nah, it's something quick. The kids, it's funny. Like, my daughter, she always complains. Ava, she always complains how, like, oh, I'm so hot. Can we go inside? She didn't fucking move. As soon as, as, soon she, as she saw the money. As soon as she saw the money, she's like, yeah, two, you want two cup? You want, they, it was a cup or a, a cup for, was it a cup for like two bucks or like a cup and a cookie for three? She was like doing the upsell, the cookie. And the oh, the upsell. Like, yeah, I like that. look at them. You make the cookies or you bought the Nah, cookie? the little the, the cookies, bought them. It was something and like- people actually stopped? Mad 150 people. bucks? Yeah, well, because people would stop and they oh, would- because they're at that stop sign too. They're right at that yeah, stop yeah. sign. And it was a time of day where like Ador- a lot of people- Adorable. Ador- Dude, some people would just come up and be was like, the, Was the baby out there too? So she was sitting with me and every time a car would come up and stop, she'd run and go, hi, hi, <laughs> hi. It's a wrap. <laughs> take the fucking money. Take the, fu- take the fucking money out. <laughs> T- the 20. Here's a 20. No Here's change. No change. <laughs> yeah, but people were just like, you know, they see the kids and they're just like, they stop. Like, I don't want lemonade. Here's some. And they would just give them like 10 bucks. Or they would I like, love that. Or they you. would do get the lemonade. No, I'll keep the change. And at the end of the day, you got to eat all the cookies. Look at <laughs> and we, we ate all the cookies. <laughs> the rest of the cookies, we ate them. <laughs> but yeah, that was funny. The, the, the lemonade stand. I'm like, yeah, you guys should do that every weekend. Fuck it. That's Why funny. not? They go, we want to buy stuff? You're, treating the, you're teaching them economics, commerce. Yeah. yeah. Teach them how to make and some money. you tax it. Because not for nothing. Like, <laughs> And then you tax it. I teach them. I said, well, we don't pay taxes here. But you, <laughs> but co- you do. There's cost of goods. You're like, I don't pay taxes, but you guys will. Well, I was trying to explain it to them because like Devin's daughter was like, I don't I'm like, you can't sell it for a dollar. Let me explain to you about cost. I said, how much are these cups? She told me. I was like, are we going to divide the cost of the cups by how many cups are in the sleeve? That's your cost per cup. Okay. How much was the lemonade mix? And we figured it out. I said, this is how you figure out your cost per cup. Mm-hmm. I was like, now you're going to charge a dollar. I'm like, doesn't that seem like not a lot of money? For the cost per cup. She's like, yeah. I was like, okay, $2 a cup, three for a cup and a cookie. And I'm like, okay, yeah. So you gotta teach them little things. Cause like most kids, they fucking tune out. Yeah. So you just gotta like break it down to them a little bit. Mm. And it's good for kids to think about, oh, you're dividing and you're at age too. Like, yeah. Can so you, you had four kids out there? Two. Oh, cause Lino's in Lino's Portugal. Lino's in Portugal, yeah, yeah. And then the baby would just, and I was, I sat outside the whole time with them. But yeah, man, that's a lot of money, 150 bucks for a kid. Yeah. It's like, oh, you want some crap? And Go. they were entertained. They were entertained for two hours. And I, they I, weren't on their phone or watching TV. Nope. Outside, yeah. in the heat, set up you know, the table, had the, the beach umbrella. Yeah, so yeah. They, pff, that's what I'm going to start doing. Oh, you want to go to shit, buy shit at Five Below? Go set up the fucking lemonade stand. Go make some money. I'm not spending money on shit. Yeah. Then you then you do the Steve Kaufman and <sighs> buy ice cream and go to the beach and have them panhandling ice cream at the beach, building an empire. Yeah, build an empire, a yeah, little yeah. illegal ice cream peddling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love people setting up. They're these Spanish people right like, now a couple blocks away from me. They set up every weekend. Two big tents and they're doing like fresh fruit juices. Like I always see those people in the yeah. city too. And then, like it's coming out to Long Island now. But then I'm like, Do you have a permit for that? <laughs> I'm at, that I'm actually some kids are one thing, but like adults, a, two like big ass tents of like Spanish people having like a whole fucking fruit smoothie station outside across from a Seven Eleven. I'm surprised no one hasn't called and been like, uh, "Where are your permits?" <laughs> you know, like I don't know. You know, give somebody botulism over here. 
Check. Speaking, speaking of that. A botulism? Yeah. Okay, what? Do you know uh, where, how, do you know, do you know who is basically one of the pioneers for expiration dates on, on food? No. Al Capone. Really? Yeah. No shit. So I have to remember if it was him or a family member either ate or drank something that was expired and got sick. Yeah. And he like pushed for the reform to put expiration dates on fucking really? shit. And I'm like, if it's him personally, it makes so much sense because he was like, his IQ was like fucking 80. Yeah. And like, you know, he lived with syphilis for his entire life and it rotted his yeah, brain. Yeah, it was crazy. Which he could have just got a shot of penicillin and cured it, but like... Just but like, they didn't know. It went It went so undiagnosed for a long time. Schizophrenia and syphilis, like a people... Yeah, he just had a, a drippy dick. I, I okay. the drunk what? history. You ever see the drunk history no, Chicago seen, episode with that. Al Capone, no. where he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like fucking dumbest guy in the world. He just had fucking ooze dripping out of his dick. He's like, ah, oh, I got a drippy dick. <laughs> remember, remember, remember Jackie, that girl I dated back in the yeah, day. Yeah. Her grandfather was a closeted homosexual. Okay, and he like, he, I think the grandmother ended up dying. Because she thought, they thought she was schizophrenic, and her mental decline went really bad. It turned out the grandfather gave her syphilis <laughs> from having unprotected gay sex on the beaches in Florida when he would go down there, and he went up giving the grandmother like syphilis, and the grandmother <laughs> died <laughs> indirectly because of that. Isn't that fucked up? That's really fucked up. Yeah, syphilis, man. Get that shot, dog. Yeah, just get, get it your, taken care of. Get the shot, dog. Yeah. Yeah, Al Capone. You ever see that movie with um, Tom, Tom Hardy? Hardy yeah. It's like, it's a little like weird. fucking nuts. Yeah, it's yeah, a little weird. Fucking it's weird. Gold fucking Tommy gun fucking yeah. just walking around. The movie wasn't, I didn't like yeah, it as much it as I wanted good. to. Yeah, I, it wasn't that good. Yeah, I thought it was like going to be cooler just really about him losing his mind in his mansion in Miami. <laughs> Fishing in his swimming pool. It's awesome. What a cool house. Yeah. I think that house is like for sale or it was for Probably. sale not long ago. Yeah. That'd be Al cool. Al Capone, the pioneer of expiration dates. Yeah, so, so that's kind of cool. Go figure, right? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. There's a lot a lot of uh, famous people, or not famous, but it takes someone who's like known or like be aggressive. Someone like a get shit done. Yeah. Who is that? Um, oh, I think it was like that expired fi- milk or something. Yeah. That like made him sick. Damn. Now expiration dates are really just suggestions and ways to get you to just fucking buy more food. Well, that's what, that was the conversation I was having well, with all the trolls about the Arizona iced tea thing. Mm. I'm like, there's a difference between purchase date and best buy date. Yeah. yeah like yeah. those are not the same they're thing. They're not the same, no. So like shelf life of like a canned substance yeah. is a pretty long time. And they're like, oh no, they sell so many. Like they're going through like crazy. I'm like, yeah, but they're ordering like half a pa- half yeah. 18 wheeler yeah, of fucking yeah. product and it's yeah. sitting in the back and it's fucking rotating yeah. out weekly, but like they're still stocked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like can't run out of that. That's our best selling product. So yeah. you have like a fucking cooler full of fucking shit. Most food you're eating is old anyway. Like yeah. strawberry. How 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 quick do you think they get strawberries from fucking Mexico to here? Preservatives and shit. Yeah, they freeze them. They cool their truck. Like they're already that's already like halfway fucking dead by the time it gets to you anyway. Yeah, everything's just killing us. It's disgusting. Yep, it's gross. I was talking to my, uh, one of my gym friends. You know, these people you talk to every day at the gym. And he was in Italy. The same time I was in Spain for his honeymoon, and he's like celiac. I was like, bro, you're going to be good over in Italy. You can eat the, anything over there. And he's like, yeah. He came back. I was like, how was it? He's like, bro, you were right. He goes, I was eating pasta, bread, everything the whole fucking time. Not a single issue the entire time I was in Italy. And everybody I know that has that glu- Fucking Monsanto fucking. Oh, bro. Disgusting. Yeah. All that Monsanto feed and all the other Bill Gates fucking shit. Gross. Trying to kill you. Seed oils. Turning the frogs gay. <laughs> <laughs> Turning the frogs gay. <laughs> On the way here, I was listening at a nice healthy dose of uh, WBAB. <laughs> nice. Bro, two things. One, like you could be an average looking guy in the 80s and yeah. be like a heart heartthrob. Like fucking think about fucking <laughs> Peter Gabriel, sledgehammer. Like he's just slinging dick like that. That like they call dick. him Sledgehammer. Like, look at Tom Petty, Robert Palmer, all those people. Tom you're Petty. addicted to love, like to that guy. Like I just like an average looking white. You know what I mean? An average, average white. white. Look at Tom Petty. Tom Petty was in a love triangle with Stevie Nicks and fucking uh, Jimmy Iovine back in the day. How gross of a dude is Tom Petty? Who the fuck is Jimmy Iovine? 
you know who Jimmy Iovine is. He's like, Jimmy Iovine's another one of the most important people. Like every person you've ever enjoyed, every record you've ever listened to from like, John Lennon's early solo stuff. The old white guy, the old bold white guy. He's like oh. the big, most famous producer ever. He's yeah, produced yeah, yeah. everything from the my favorite my favorite everything. musical love triangle is Eric Clapton, George Harrison, and his wife. Whose wife? George Harrison's wife. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Really? Yeah, that song. Uh, what's it called? Layla. Layla <laughs> is about George Harrison's wife. Got you on your knees, Layla. Yeah. He's talking. He's, that was a de- that was a diss track. Eric Clapton really? and George Harrison hated each other over George Harrison's wife. Really, and then which also makes it even better. Years later, where he toured with the Beatles, yeah. and played guitar. And you know what's even better? Yeah. It probably really ate him up inside. Is that Eric Clapton's a better guitarist than George Harrison? Probably fucks. <laughs> that, <better too. laughs> probably fucks better, dude. That's why. That's why his wife yeah. kept going to fucking. He's fucking a better Layla. <laughs> Layla, dude. It's about George Harrison's really? wife, dude. I didn't know that, yeah, bro. That makes me like Eric Clapton even more. I love Eric. Clapton. I love Eric Clapton love Eric for Clapton. that reason. The level of pettiness. Damn. I really enjoy a, a certain level of pettiness. That's great. With, like crazy. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Devin's going to, I'm going to tell her that piece of uh, rock history. Yeah, She's going to love Beatles, that. So. <laughs> Ugh. You know what? I've had like, I've had like a new respect for the Beatles. I listen to a lot of them now and like the way, like, I don't know, Devin likes the Beatles and she likes records. And the way I get is like, I like I'm, records. I'm obsessed. I took advantage of that when I was at your house. Have a nice record collection, yeah, don't I? Listen to a little Nirvana on yeah, vinyl. Got, it's good. You got to go deep in that. Got, Stevie, I had a little Fleetwood Mac on vinyl. You got to go, deep, you gotta go deep in that thing. Stevie got, Nicks sounds good on vinyl. Stevie Nicks does. Everything sounds good on vinyl, yeah. dude. Everything. The B-52. The B-52s. <laughs> Rock Lobster. Rock, Rock Lobster. Rock <laughs> Lobster. <laughs> yeah. I love the B-52s, man. That oh, album is really good. fucking great. It's really good. I, I, you know what I like? I like records because I listen to music. Like I would never search Rock Lobster <laughs> on 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 Spotify, right? Like I would never, because like I wouldn't think about that. But you get all these records. You're like, oh, bro, and I just we just go random pick picture one. You, just picture you driving the Honda Odyssey, <laughs> listening to Rock ah. Lobster, getting into a fucking road rage. <laughs> how do you how do you have road rage listening to the B 52s man? <laughs> it's like getting out of your car with Rock Lobster <laughs> blasting. Like, That's when you know you're Rock <laughs> Rock <laughs> Lobster. So you know you're fucked when the guys is blasting yeah. Rock Lobster. Yeah, I love records, <laughs> but I get obsessive with things, and I'll sort like so now we have a lot of Beatles records. I got a lot of Beatles records. Well, that collection I got from that woman like two months ago, I they took a ton of original like first pressings Beatles stuff in there. That's crazy. Yeah, are those those are worth something. <laughs> it's not like really. uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, it, it's like any collectible. It's all condition based, you know, and like they're not the greatest condition, but some cool records so i got one of an old introduce uh, introduce called introducing the beatles from vj records it's like a an old an earlier like company they worked with it's very rare but that record you, you see anywhere sell from ten dollars to seventeen thousand dollars so it's all condition based that's the thing and it's all like the outside of the the sleeve the actual record itself everything's condition based one that sold for seventeen thousand is probably still factory sealed you know, yeah, yeah. The record business, the the record uh, industry for like collectibles is fucking nuts, dude. Crazy, 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 crazy. With a cool little record store in Madrid, that was cool. Yeah, did you buy anything? Yeah, we got <clears throat> a fucking Beatles record. <laughs> <laughs> One that you already had. No, how many no. Beatles records are there? Dude, a shitload. There's a ton of Beatles you records. Made that much mid music. <laughs> <laughs> so much mid music. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're earliest. They're, 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 I really they're, don't like when people say the Beatles are revolutionary because they're really not. They're not. Well, you know what? A lot of those bands, like the Beatles, the Stones, all those people, even Elvis, right? That whole that that time, they're not. They are revolutionary because it was white people doing that music. Like the most of the Stones' early stuff is just blues covers. Hmm. Like Elvis's first song. The, I can't remember the name of it, but it was his first song that at the time was very popular through black musicians, but nobody listened to it outside of the black community until Elvis did it. So like that's what's revolutionary about Elvis or the Beatles or the Stones. They crossed over and took like, the, I mean, listen to old, listen to the old Rolling Stones, dude. It's fucking their blues records, it's not rock and roll. It's not British Invasion. They're blues records. A lot of the Beatles stuff is old blues records. Like a lot of that stuff all comes from old Calypso, blues musicians at that time. No one gave a shit about black people in the 50s and 60s. They didn't. 
Mm. Who no? You think you think uh, do, do you think Shea Stadium would have sold out if the, the Beatles were five black guys at that was it nineteen fifty seven? They would they, they wouldn't even been allowed to to play in the in Shea Stadium. So that's why they're revolutionary. That's the thing, and they really, they really just kind of stole music that was already being made. And of course, down the line, they had a lot of original stuff, like the Beatles. You have records like Sgt. Pepper. That's actually probably musically a very important record as far as things go. Because they started playing with different sounds and shit like that, and you know, so they listen. I'm not a huge Beatles fan, but I appreciate them now. I give them credit where credit's due. I got to do more of that lately instead of shitting on everything. But some things are just not good. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Like new Metallica, not good. <laughs> the fact they have new music is odd. They never died. That's the problem. They never had none like, of them died. None of them had like crippling drug addiction, so they just kept making. They've been making music. What's the lead singer's name? James Hadfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like sips a glass of scotch, smokes <laughs> a cigar while he's playing at yeah. like the show, which I think is pretty cool. That's cool. They're like yeah. cool. And like their drummer, he's just gay. He's been such a whiny S- bitch for suing years, suing everybody for piracy suing. since yeah. fuck <laughs> you, dude. Fuck in the late nineties. Most overrated <laughs> rock drummer. Yeah, <laughs> Lars Ulrich. Lars Ulrich. I didn't. Even, that's why I didn't even want to go to the fucking second show of Metallica when we were there because I was like, what song do you want to hear that they didn't play the first night? I was like, no, really. Let, I'm wait. Let tell me. And she's like, that's really. She's like, I can't think of any. I'm like, exactly. They played all their hits. That's really funny. Uh, just randomly, that movie, Get Him to the Greek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with like his uh, that's a good movie. Russell Brand's like ex wife is dating Lars Ulrich. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh man, my <laughs> so back to Bab. My favorite part of BAB is the phone calls. BAB is a radio station for people. A who, rock who station don't on Long Island. Old but classic like, rock. Classic <laughs> rock on BAB. It is that like a classic BAB phone call. Like in the commercial, <laughs> it's like, it's like, hey, how's it going? My name's Steve. I'm from Patchogue. He's like, I love going to the beach for my lunch hour, smoking a butt and listening to BAB. You're like... <laughs> You know he's in the van. That guy up. No, and you know he's in the van. He's doing it in a van. Some shitty pickup truck. It was like I love it. Like or like sports radio shows when the caller, the the line that you always get is like first time caller, long time listener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Yankees need to trade everybody. You ever call in and and get picked up on? No, I did one time, and I got. I don't even remember what it was about. I called Opie and Anthony. I was driving back from. uh, from uh, from DC, and I was listening to them on XM, and I called Opie and Anthony, and they picked up. It was funny. I can't remember what I said. I can't make a phone call for longer than two minutes without it hanging up on. Well, this was a long time call ago. Call failure. So this was a long time ago. I don't call on radio stations. I don't got time like that. I had nothing but time then. We used to prank call people back in the day, pretending oh. to be radio stations. Prank call. I remember prank calling people, dude. That called was a kid, so much called fun. Called a kid in, in my class, and we pretend to be a radio station and answer. He's like, asked, he's like, if you answer these questions right, you win a prize. And he like answered the questions. I forget what they were. And they was like, congratulations, you want a goat. And the guy, he was like, what? He's like, yeah, you want a goat. Like, it's a baby goat. We're going to send it to you. And the guy was like, uh, okay. He's like, you want my address? He's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get off live and get your address. And he like thought he won a goat. I don't even know you can prank call people anymore. I think people get so many scam calls, they don't even answer. Like you yeah. couldn't prank call me. If I don't have your numbers, if I don't answer the phone. Well, you just need one of those uh, magic jacks where you can have the whatever area code you're calling. You just mm-hmm. have a random number for that area code. I think it'll still come up scam likely, right? I get it all the time. I get, you know how many calls I get from Montauk? Don't fucking call me from Montauk. It's a sales call. It's someone trying to give me an MCA loan. Montauk. Yeah. That's the... I got, a, I, got a, I got a call about solar panels for my house yesterday. I was like, joke's on you, pal. I get those all the time. I don't have a house. <laughs> they, put, they, they stay pushing solar panels. <laughs> yeah, what are they going to do when everybody just rents? <laughs> I don't know. It's sell them to BlackRock? I don't know. In bulk? Sell them to BlackRock in bulk? BlackRock thought, puts solar panels on all the ho- residential homes they own in the United States? Didn't love to get that contract. Right? That'd be nice. Yeah. Didn't BlackRock just buy like Ancestry.com or 23andMe? So now BlackRock has That's like the DNA. rights to all your DNA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that's why I've always been against those uh, Ancestry tracing uh, things. I've always sounded like such a conspiracy theorist for years. I was like, dude, why would you give them your DNA? Yeah, I still Like, you don't know what they're going to do with that. Yeah, 100%. 
Alex Jones. They can they can make they can make bioweapons specifically for your genetic markers to kill specific people, which is true, actually. Yeah. So hopefully they don't come for me. I don't know. Yeah, Alex Jones is like, make sure Donald Trump doesn't shake anybody's hand in the next six months. He's like, they're gonna have a chemical weapon, it's gonna look like a normal hand, they're gonna and he's gonna be uh sublingual through the hand into the fucking bloodstream and he's dead dude it's getting it's starting the 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 the, the final ha- quarter half of the season is getting a little crazy on on america the television show it's getting a little fucking nutty dude i don't even i don't care to talk about politics it's just a really I ain't talk about surprising pot. joke how someone crazy. how someone three weeks ago could be inadequate and now is the best thing ever well i just don't know how that work how how They've How been, is that allowed to make her the candidate? She was never like selected by anybody. He was never. He would. They didn't have a primary for him either. They were just. He's the president. He's the incumbent. Like they completely got rid of the process of democracy. I don't think Trump's going to win. They're going to try and. I don't think Trump's. Gonna I don't win. think he could lose. She's a moron. The moment they debate, she's going to sound so stupid. She she's not smart. Rich, there's more morons in this country than there. Are Judge people Joe their- Brown, like. Was like she slept her way to the top. She's a hoe. Like she's not smart. She's dumb. She's really dumb. And then I was like, I was listening to Joe Rogan. And I forget who he had. Uh, Mike, Mike Malice, I think. Um, had him on the podcast, and they were talking about it. And they're like, "Have you heard her speak? Like, yeah, she is not smart. Like yeah, dumb. I get it, but dumb. This, I get it, but I don't think. But like they're all bragging. Oh, he doesn't want to debate her. He doesn't want to debate her because. He doesn't know if she is the the nominee yet. It's not confirmed. Yeah, There's still three weeks confirmed? out. There's still three weeks three out from weeks. the DNC connection. Well, who else are they gonna make the nominee? Who else? They're not gonna have a vote, so I don't know how that works. Like it's crazy. He's a threat to democracy. He got voted in for that <sighs> position. So I don't know. it's gonna be wild. See what's going on in Venezuela? No. What's going on there now? They just had elections. Yeah. And their socialist dictator, who's been running the country mm-hmm. for 30 years, uh, lost 80 mm-hmm. by, like, he, like the the competitor, mm-hmm. the candidate, who had like 80% of the, the vote. And he's just like, in the middle of it, he announced that he won, went, shut down all the, wouldn't let people vote, mm-hmm. went and tried to take all the polling, really? like the, the poll machines, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Started arresting the candidates. Really? And the country is raging. So much so that the police stood down, the military stood down, really? and started protesting with them. Really? They're tearing down all the Hugo Chavez statues. Wow. Like They're like, no, she won. She won. Really? Or he won. I don't think it's a guy. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And, Revolution- then the, and then mainstream media starts pushing this narrative that like, oh, actually, that guy who mm-hmm. has been in power for as long as he mm-hmm. actually won, and the CIA changed the votes to make this Democrat, democratic democracy, whatever, well, fucking competitor. Let's, fucking. let's be honest. Anytime there's an election in a country that has uh, natural resources, uh, the CIA, they, they dip their little fingers into it. You can, you can best believe an election in South America? Yeah. <laughs> You well, please. You think the CIA? We've had, we've had tension with Venezuela for the last twenty years. Doesn't matter. Do you think the CIA hasn't been down there for twenty years? They've been no. dipping their hands. That no. that please. That's just what they do. It's what they do. It's a ve- Venezuela is no. a very powerful country. You know what that very powerful you country. Know what that leader did uh, when he first took power. No, changed the power of their Supreme Court. Really, which is what Joe Biden's trying to do right now for our Supreme Court. Well, weird. It's all weird. Weird. It'll be interesting. I you, hate politics. Fuck politics. Yeah, fuck politics. politics. But you know the differences though between countries like Venezuela and all these other countries, they do revolutions really well because like those people don't really have shit to distract. Yeah, Venezuela them. was used to be one of the richest it used countries. To be. It was the richest country yeah. in in South America. And it should still be. Yeah. It should yeah. still be. Yeah. And it's not. Yeah. And the people are fed up with it. Americans are yeah. too fat oh, and lazy found, and distracted. They found uh, when they seized his uh his office or something, the Capitol building or mm-hmm. something, they found like a fucking huge stockpile of medicine and goods that like really? they were they were short of. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I always love seeing and hearing like the stuff they find when they start like raiding the palaces of dictators. Like, like the extravagant gun, like gold stuff. Gold guns, gold toilets. Yeah, like sit down with like a gold <laughs> toilet bowl, like just 
uber extravagant <laughs> shit. It's like, yeah, so your countrymen just fucking toil in poverty and you just uh, are wiping your ass with cashmere. <laughs> Cashmere toilet paper. Just stack hundred dollar bills <laughs> next to the toilet. Just wipe your ass with hundred dollar bills. Oh man, the world's fucked, dude. The world is so fucked. This is dumb. Like I would move to Spain. I was like, eh, mm. like I don't know. Europe's a pretty fucked country. Yeah, Europe's Speaking pretty of fucked. Spain, you, good thing you didn't go to Barcelona. Why? Because there's a trend going on of they're harassing all the tourists to leave. They don't want the. They don't want them there. No, like mobs of people, like really, just like in like tourists are like eating on the street, and they're like in their face, like with cameras, like leave. We really? want you to leave. Leave now. We don't want you here. Well, it, not lucky for me. It's lucky that citizens of Barcelona weren't shoving their phones in my face, telling me to leave. <laughs> you don't want to get arrested in a foreign country. It's fucking Spain, bro. You fucking shit. Go right to the embassy. That's why you got to know where the embassy is in every fucking country. You blast some dude in the face, you run right to the embassy. Pull your yeah. passport out. They let you in. In India, our hotel's right right up the street. That's nice. Got to know where the embassy is. Yeah, I was more happy that I came back like three it's days. It's just a far enough run that I could, feel, I, could, I could get it done. You think you like, can get it if done? If I had to run, I could get there. Yeah, I can't really run that great. Like, I, got sho- I got shoes. I'm getting chased by people with no shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Who are emaciated people with no <laughs> shoes. <laughs> yeah, they'll kill you. In India, they'll just rape you in the, str- in the streets, dude. And smoke rape. cigarettes over rape. your body. Gross. Rape while smoking cigarettes? Yeah. <laughs> You'll make you smoke a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I came back when I did because three days later, there was a global shutdown at the uh, with the airports. Yeah. Yeah. I, they, I saw a video of that like on an Instagram of like that day. It was actually at the Madrid International Airport, oddly enough. It would look like a shit show. I was like, thank God. I would have just spent three more days in Spain, I guess, but which would have been nice. I have a. Uh, I'm not coming back. I have a hypothetical. Yeah. To, I haven't it, had one in a while. Is it cheating? Okay. okay. All right. Say you're married in long long term relationship, whatever. Mm-hmm. Long, let's say you like a hot girl's picture on Instagram. Yeah. Or you comment on their post. Okay. Is that cheating? It's micro cheating. It's not cheating. It's it's, it, it's technically it's micro cheating. It's a it's the surface level of like, be like yeah, you would cheat on your spouse if given like the opportunity. Like you don't want to go like out. Some random OnlyFans girl, right? I mean, it's not really. How is it? Cheating? It's it's micro cheating. You it's so? yeah. I mean, it's not like. <clears throat> so it's for instance, somebody, it's not like let's it, say the post is uh, it's a hot girl and she's like, "Where are my New York guys at?" Yeah, and you comment with like. The hand up emoji. Yeah, 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 that's cheating. It's micro cheating. It's micro cheating because now say that that random girl hits you up, which doesn't happen ever, ever. But just say she does. Okay. Oh, you're really from New York? I'm gonna be there next week. What's your number? I'd love to meet up. Now what do you do? That same person who goes through that same simp cock boy is like eh, he's be like, yeah, hit me up. It's micro cheating. It's like, oh, how about this? How about this it's, post? It's, it's, open, it's opening the door to cheating. Tell me if this is bad. Wow. So it's a, it's a girl suggestive picture with her, like her camel toe and like fucking, yeah. Uh, like uh, yoga pants. Yeah. And then do guys even eat tacos anymore? Yeah. Okay. And your comment is, I eat tacos. Is that cheating? It's micro cheating. It's micro cheating. It is. It's micro cheating. Well, that's what I don't think it's like cheat, like, you know. I, I, Our sensitive friend was get was fighting with uh, with his his significant other about what? Did he just been fighting? He was, was he micro cheating? So I'll, or was she micro cheating? I'll give you. I give he it. Could, to, listen, yeah, give it to me. All right, I won't say anything. So he's been away. They've been haven't seen each other because he's been working and he's been working away. And uh, they've been like talking less and less. They mm. went like a week without talking on the phone. She forgot his birthday. Like mm-hmm. just some, like it's yeah, not, yeah. not good. Yeah. So he got you know he drinks alone and gets in his feelings. So he got he. Got, I don't even know what Threads is, but yeah, he created a Threads account, which is like an Instagram, Twitter, I think. He, yes, 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 yes. So like that, those two pictures that I told you, those he did that drunk. Okay. Okay. Didn't remember it in the morning. Woke up like his girlfriend's friend. His girl's friend, wife's friend, whatever, saw it, told mm-hmm. her, and then now oh. he's in the doghouse. Well, 
Because it's him, no, it's not cheating. Because I know he, I know him, and I know he would like never, never, he would never cheat. He, that's not, he wouldn't yeah. do that. Yeah, he wouldn't do that. Yeah, I'm not saying that because my friend, if he was, but like, oh, he's a fucking he'd fuck anything that walks. But he wouldn't do that. So yeah. like, yeah, no, it's not cheating. He's drunk and stupid and whatever. But like, the general, can the general public of people. I eat tacos, or yeah, I'm from Cincinnati. Like those people aren't drunk and You're sad. Like, yeah, boy. he's not a cheater. He's just kind of retarded. He's just kind of retarded. Yeah, he's not a cheater. <laughs> yes, your question Imagine without the context. Yes, it's micro cheating in context. No, he's just retarded. on social media. I don't like anybody's shit. Nobody. I don't leave comment. I I, I, leave I don't shit. comment. I don't like I people's comment, posts. I comment trolly things sometimes. So I like to get people going. It's funny. I, I comment trolling stuff too on like shit that I think is funny. Like there's yeah, this guy yeah. on TikTok that's like self-proclaimed finance expert. I jump in his live all the time and yeah, I'm like, yeah. bro, you're not registered for anything. Like, <laughs> like you I have, just looked you up in FINRA. You, you paid you paid for like public articles to be published about how good you are at like finances and yeah, all you ever yeah. talk about is credit cards like yeah, shut yeah, the fuck yeah. up you troll yeah and he's like oh look at this guy's only got fucking 100 followers like doesn't matter yeah. I, i'm 10 times better at your job than you are you should go live with him yeah we can't I, nah. no no Why? but anyway so yeah so he did that stupid but then i'm like listen man like that's just my only fans girl that might not even be real it might even be like ai person you know how many uh, ai only fans there are now like i i, I honestly i know that but i don't know how you do it because you can't just like you have to be verified you need to like show identification you can't just like start bro, i'll show you i'll show you a hundred ai only fans girls right well, now listen the reality is and not because i'm like looking for them the reality just, is you know, if you're chatting with a top tier only fans girl you're really chatting with someone her manager hired yeah it's not her it's not her so what's the difference ai well, that's well, not. My, he's not chatting with anybody. He's one of the twenty thousand dummies putting a comment in in a post, or a th three thousand or ten thousand, well, whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean? Even if it's not, even if it's not AI, they're just Where like are my it's New York guys at. Yeah, it's one of like the multiple. <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> he told me he goes just just, he's using like, the algorithm, Jimmy. You know how you know he's sensitive. Right? He's like he's like I was so mad at myself before I knew what he did. Right? Yeah. And he's like, I'm so mad, bro. Like, I never do this shit. Like, fucking so stupid. Like, oh, my God. I'm like, assuming he, like, had a real-life interaction yeah, 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 with somebody. It yeah. was like, fucking Jimmy. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. it's the end of the world. You know? Then he tells me what he did, and I'm just like, Jimmy. And he's like, he's like, I'm like, Jimmy, calm down. Calm down. Well. And I was like, and he's like, what? What? I was like, you're just gay. <laughs> You're just gay. You're just like one of the other thirty thousand dumbasses that's like she's gonna she's gonna DM me after I respond. I eat tacos. You know I'm though, gay. I I have to say, any girl that gets really <laughs> fucking who gets really pissed about that is probably just got mad dudes in her DM and has like a little bit of guilt and shame because she probably entertains a bunch of dudes in her fucking social media because that's just how it is. That's how it is. If you're if you're at least a seven on the internet. There's people in your in people are always sliding in, and if you're gonna get really fucking see, I'm I'm petty. really cunty about something that just that makes me suspicious. I'm petty, right? So what you said, I agree with. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you fucking did that to me," I'd be like, I'd pull up your post and be like, "What does this guy mean?" Yeah, well. Well, what is that guy? What about that guy? What well, about that guy? Our sensitive friend isn't like that. No, he just he doesn't let, like to he, he doesn't like to fight. Yeah, so. she probably got him thinking that the he's whole doing reason all the dishes now he's doing all the dishes. <laughs> he just he just worked for forty days <sighs> in the field to teaching recruits, and he gets home and now he's doing laundry and dishes, <laughs> sleeping on the couch. Someone Poor that guy. Could, could just kill a whole room of yeah? could, oh, yeah. a guy who could kill a whole room of per people uh, you know what, I wonder if she's pa if she's passive aggressive though it'd be like hey babe what do you want for dinner she's like I'm kind of in the mood for tacos <laughs> now you know what <laughs> fuck that because from what I heard about her I'd have to say even if it didn't happen our friend would get back from 40 days in the field training recruits to be fucking killers for the marmy no. And he come back, and I bet his wife's already a fucking slob. And I bet he'd be doing dishes and doing laundry, and she just have excuses as to why the dishes and the laundry weren't done anyway. So You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. Not so wrong. you know what? I hope our sensitive friends listening stop being so gay. 
And go bang one of those college students running around there. Come on. <laughs> I, that's what I said to him. He goes, listen, bro. Give us something. I'll give you something to be fucking I'm, mad at. Apparently, I'm, apparently I'm, I'm a good friend, right? But I'm not like the one that you want to get advice from when it comes to like your relationship. Because cause I was like, because he was like, bro, he's like, if my marriage is over, he's like, I don't know how I'm going to live. You'll be fine. Blah, blah, blah. I go, listen, bro. I go, just, I go, listen, what's the worst case scenario? And he's like, are you serious? Do you really want to, do you really want to know the worst case scenario? I go, listen, I'm going to give you the worst case scenario. In five months, you got a 21 year old first year grad student on your <laughs> there's no sleeping at your apartment. There's like, no worse. Ca- it's all it's all best case scenario. I'm like, dude, I was like, you're covered in tattoos. You are you're jacked. Built, you're built like you're an absolute jacked, fucking unit. And okay, you're, and you're a teacher at the school. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, you're a good looking guy who's yeah, jacked from dude, New York with tattoos. What are you talking about? You, you, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And you're in the South. You're and you're in the, the South. South. And you're in the South. You're going to be fine. And you're going to be fine. And you'll get divorced from a woman who you don't even have kids with. So it doesn't even, it's not even a real marriage. I'm sorry. <laughs> if, you're, if you're married and you got to get divorced and you don't have kids with her, it's not even a real I don't marriage. Know. I don't, yeah, I don't it's know. It's not even a real marriage. You don't have any kids. It's how, how easy and clean is a divorce without kids. <sighs> It's like a it's like a breakup. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, goodbye. I'll sign when they come in. All right, see ya. Fucking yeah. in a state that you don't need. To, you don't even have to live in. You don't have to, you don't live, have to live near each other. You don't even live near each other because you, you live in a separate state anyway. Go get fucking divorced, bro. <laughs> Five grand to a lawyer. Get divorced. It's his person, bro. Leave him alone. It's, it's his person. person. This fucking. It's his person. I get having your. I get having. Your I've person. seen our sensitive friend tell four people in the same night that they were his person okay i get that. i've seen him say i love you to four different girls i mean we were in high school but like it was still high school it wasn't elementary school you'll find saying i love you to four different girls and then get rejected and then tell the next girl that he loves them you'll find get you. rejected and yeah. then, you know the, the fourth one was the one you'll find your <laughs> yeah, the fourth one was the one you'll find your new person you'll find oh, your new person oh man but yeah if you don't have kids Use anybody, not even our sensitive friend. If you're married and you're not happy and you don't have kids, just fucking get divorced. It's not even a real marriage. What are you doing? What are you splitting up? Keep the fucking dog, you bitch. I didn't want the dog to begin with. I don't want a fucking Maltese. Keep the fucking thing. It's yours. Keep it. What are you what, what, what are you arguing about? Get divorced. Move on. You don't have any kids. Not a real marriage. It's not. Yeah. It's not a real marriage. I saw a video of uh, I don't want to hear it. Of Donald Trump from like the nineties. He was getting divorced. Yeah. And uh she wanted they were together for like six years. Yeah. She wanted twenty five million. Yeah, and uh, she settled for a million bucks. Yeah, and the woman was interviewing. She's like, "Donald, just you're worth a billion dollars. Just give her the twenty five million. He's like, "I built this company by myself. Yeah, he's like, "Nobody helped me." He goes, "I don't got kids with her." He's like, "We were together for six years. I wish her nothing but the best." He's like, "But I look at marriages just like businesses." He's like. They work or they don't. He's like, sometimes someone's got to get the better. He's like, and it's it's not her this time. Gave her a million dollars. That's a lot of money to some people. In the 80s, and the, a million dollars the in woman the goes, 80s. The woman goes, Donald, is that a lot of money to you? He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> But he ain't wrong. No, you don't he's have not you, wrong. you don't have any kids, not and I don't wrong. want to discredit people's marriages without kids because there are circumstances where people don't can't have kids. Whatever, whatever. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but like if you don't have kids, you're div- the the separation of a marriage is much more simple. And like, what are you getting? It's like, yeah, it didn't work. Next, like next, he just loves love. I love love. That's why if I, you know, I, I love love too. <laughs> Feelings, yuck. Gr- gay yuck gay no thanks yeah on that note <laughs> yeah on that note i, Wait, I had to have one more one yeah. more one more let's go one more hold on stop, uh, being, stop being gay sensitive friend no i'll save it for next time actually yeah yeah sure? i wanted I, I i was driving and i was driving here and some guy in his fucking tesla was being an absolute cocksucker <sighs> It was just like trying to get in front of me, then going back, then trying to get in front. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. just it's downpour, like torrential downpour. Yeah. Like, just chill out. On the way here, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was raining. Yeah, pouring oh, really? out east. Oh no, shit. So it made me think of your your Tesla beef <laughs> with that kid. But we can save that for that was another the, one. That was the best. I, I got it. Your cease and desist letter. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it. next. That time. is a good story. We'll talk about yeah. that next time. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys. All right, thanks. Like, guys. share, yes. follow, subscribe, please. Hey guys, we are ninety five subscribers on youtube away from monetizing nice. um, i know it's not important to monetize we're doing this just because we lo- we like to talk to each other and we like everybody else to listen to it yeah but for clout do us a favor so-